Good morning folks and hey, I want to show you why this for emergency power solar power generator this one here I refer to this one as the beast. Yeah, let's find out why <laughs> yeah. yeah, we call this the beast and the reason is for number one I've got I guess about 15 or maybe more of these things that have come through from different companies This one here is the biggest strongest best features this is like yeah this is the king of the pile right here you know this is the monster now if you watched the show months and months ago you would have seen that oops who supplies this had sent us one at one time and it was an early model that came out almost like immediately and we we did a show about it and it was like yeah this thing's really cool it's very strong it's, it's quite a machine uh recently i was doing some shows about emergency power for people that are in you know hurricanes like Florida, uh, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, maybe up into Virginia. I don't know. There was a lot of damage done by these hurricanes in the last, this has been a, a rough year for it. And a lot of places, including us, uh, we had our power out for a while. So something like this was really able to help save our situation and uh, really make life comfortable all of a sudden. So it was really well worth the effort to have one and have some portable solar panels around. And I showed last week, uh, I, I get a good pick combo of price and, you know, some panels. But in mind, while I was doing all that, I kept thinking about this one. But this one is a little more expensive. This is a little bit more premium price, but it has features. It is simply the best, the strongest one that I have to this day that has come in the door. And oops makes this thing and it's nice and we got an update so what we did i talked to oops about it and they said, yep said, we'll, we'll go ahead and do it we sent the old machine back to them so they can refurbish it or whatever they're going to do and in the meantime they sent us this one which is up which is up to date and has the new features in it and things so yeah they have made some improvements over time and they gave me a discount coupon system for you guys if you're interested we'll put a link in the description below where you can find one of these and get i believe it's five percent off the price so hey you know yeah and they, i think they're on sale anyway so a good deal all the way around but wow why would you want this one well because it's so strong, <laughs> yeah. it is, it, you know, compared to anything else I've got in here, it's almost twice the capacity of storage. That alone uh, sort of really helps to go a long way because this one, if you look at that rating, that's almost like a 200 amp hour battery right there at 12.8 volts or whatever, like that's, you know, that's an incredible amount of storage. Now, it does come with a caveat, 60 pounds, but, it has all of this, you know, output here too. And they are 20 amp outlets. So if you have to run something a little on the strong side, that's gonna be you know, 1500 watts or a little heavier something, machine, table saw, <laughs> whatever, and you're doing repairs on the old house from the big bad hurricane or running the refrigerator, running a bunch of stuff, this one gives you enough power to do a lot, you know, but it's got another feature here and actually it's got a couple more features man we got to talk about all these features there's just so much let's move on to the next one let's let's talk about this right here see this big round plug this is 30 amp at 125 volt now somebody tried to correct me and i don't know whether they had the old version that i had it used to be an old 20 amp plug but this is actually rated at 30 amp it's a 30 amp 125 volt plug and will allow you to, if you have RVs, the, the campers with the 30 amp plug on them, that's your plug right there. So basically you could plug this in, the camper into this machine and it would supply power to your camper. So you could you know, run some stuff, lights, whatever, in the camper, TV, and what have you. And it's a strong, like I say, it's a strong 248 watt hour. So it's a very strong machine with lots of capacity, but that's only part of the picture, you know? To me, everything was great, but it had one more feature that absolutely was like, boom, you know, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about this in the past. Uh, and I'll just give you a quick example, old machines around that I have around here. Uh, some of them allow 200 watts in from portable solar. That's gonna take you all maybe even days to recharge, depending on you know, how, how big a unit you have. Uh, then I have some that are 400 and that was like, well, that's getting a little better, but you know, I still could use a lot more power than that. 
Uh, then we have one here that I showed the other week, and it's 500 watt. And it's good, you know, that 500 watts is pretty decent. This puppy here, technically, can charge up off portable solar or hard panels, whatever. You can bring in up to 2,250 watts. Now, before you get all excited about that, they do cut it off at 2,000, so they tell me. So, I don't know how that works out with metering, but it can max out at 150 volts coming in from solar panels at 15 amp. That's, whoa, you know, <laughs> that's a lot of power. And in order to do that back, we're gonna have to lay some more panels in the driveway. I've only got 400 watts laying in the driveway right now, so uh, I'm gonna lay another 400, and we're gonna put up to 800 watts of portables out there and bring it into charge. Now, we are gonna have a problem, so I'll show you what the problem is. This is probably at 100%. I just, I haven't checked it yet. I'm just turning it on to see what it is. What does it say? Yeah, <laughs> 100%. So, uh, we'll run this down. I'll plug a load in. I'll leave it running for a little bit so it can get it down so it'll bring the charge in. And then we'll measure the charge. And I've got the solar on an extension cable right here. And the solar actually on this one, it uses a, an Anderson uh, cable, which is right there. So uh, we'll get all lined up outside, and then we'll come back to charging this. Right now, obviously I can't, it's, it's, she's full. So I'll apologize if you hear the noise in the background. Uh, we are running 3D printers again today for production needs and you know, for clients, so be a little noisy, I think, at times. So when I come back, we'll get this thing down. Yeah. Well, what's going on out here? I'm out in the driveway, and uh, this is the 400 watt set right here. Uh, and this is a 400 watt panel, but the problem is right now is the sun's a little on the, yeah, it's a little early in the morning still. So I've also laid out a pair of 200 watt panels. And so they're tied together in series. And then they're paralleled to the 400 set. Now what that does is that gives me a total right there of 800 watts possible coming in. now. Uh, fold folding type or portable type panels like this they are never very efficient so uh, one thing for sure we're not going to get 800 watts I think if we get lucky today with the Sun at the perfect timing we might peak out around 600 and I'll tell you the truth I'd even be surprised if we see that right now but um, I'm running the uh, generator inside and running it down so that uh, we can bring some power in and charge it back up of course because that's part of this uh, deal today is I wanted to show you this because this thing can you can plug up to 2,000 watts of solar coming in that is absolutely freaking awesome okay we're back inside now showed you the solar panel situation like I said it we're maybe we might get five or six hundred watts out of that mess right now but and as the Sun gets up over us it'll it'll improve uh, I had to run this I ran this on the uh, my portable air conditioner and I had to leave it run for like an hour because it's so cold in here this morning that the uh, refrigeration thing wouldn't kick on. All it would do was run the fan. So it was like the garage is already cold. <laughs> so we weren't getting anywhere with that. Other feature that I need to point out because there is a few, there's a, you know, these are things you need to look for uh, in these, you know, solar generators or power stations, call it what you may, or just electric generator. This one has the extension on it. So in other words, you can get, you can build this, you know, you can expand this setup so that it can have even more capacity, which would really make it just that much more, you know, wow, you know, for, for power. But um, here's the Anderson cable, and I'll maybe just get a quick close-up of that because uh, if you're a ham radio operator, you'll know Anderson cables. And there's a few people, I guess, that use them for different things, but uh, this is a, a just like, you know, a four-in-one kind of thing off of my uh, cables from the uh, solar outside. I'm on an extension. I'm on uh, 20 feet of extension, which really, again, is not good because if you if you know history about Edison and Tesla, DC does not travel well, okay? Yeah, it's, you know, it just, it just doesn't. Now, now, on this side, we have, let's see if I can turn that. We have this little, I actually have a ticket here that says the, says to uh, about every three months make sure the battery is fully charged in order to keep everything in good healthy condition makes sense to me now over here we have a reset button for 15 amps on the you know the charger 
but you also have of course your standard AC plug which you can plug that in and you know plug it into an outlet a wall whatever all comes with your cables when you buy this thing but on the top is the Anderson so we're gonna plug the Anderson in right here from the, all those uh, solar panels that are laying, laying in the driveway and let's turn it let's have a look and let's see how we do I I don't think so. I don't think there are gonna be too many miracles today but and also uh, another thing about these uh, all of them uh, give it time to switch over or to start coming up and right now we can already see something's happening now it's starting to bring the solar in and that's input uh, this is output by the way uh, we also have uh, the AC on. I'm going to shut the AC off. There's no reason to have the AC running while we're doing this anyways. Uh, in some of these units, and you have to pay attention to that too, some of these uh, from different manufacturers, you should not run the AC and bring solar in at the same time. They say, you know, big no-no or whatever. Now, right now, I'm only seeing about 50 watts. That's pretty, that's pretty bad, but uh, I think we'll give it the sun some time to get up because it's really early in the morning. And uh, as the sun comes up, this should start keeping, you know, hopefully it'll keep climbing. So what I'm going to do is we're at 82 uh, percent. We'll stop now and then we'll come we'll come back. And uh, hopefully at that point, we'll see what it maxed out. It's, it's still climbing. So it's this is going to take a few minutes. So let's just stop and come back when this thing finishes, because otherwise you and I are going to be staring at that screen for a while. I'll uh, just cut in here for a second. Uh, right now we're at 385, we're still climbing, but that's already more power than I would ever actually see out of that 400 watt set. So you know that we've done things right because we've still got you know more than that coming in. And this is gonna continue to rise. So we'll cut back in as this continues to go up. Okay, this is, uh, this is why I tell people to, uh, when it comes to like portables and uh, panels, to you know try to think about getting more than whatever rating or whatever peak you wanted in this case we're good up to 2000 watts and we have 800 watts out there and we are barely just a little over 400 watts coming in right now it's about 10 o'clock in the morning so the sun isn't anywhere near peak when the sun gets up to peak which will be around between uh, noon and one o'clock we'll probably have somewhere around 600 watts coming in. And that's about as much as I'm going to expect from an 800 watt setup with portables. And it's one of the reasons why, I, like I said, I cannot say it enough. Like, you know, if, you, if your machine is good for, like in this case, 2,000 watts, then you can buy a lot more than 2,000 watts if you wanted to. Or if you had a set of hard panels and you had them up on a roof or something like that, and you had, say, you know, 3,000 watts coming in, that would be a little different because hard panels are pretty good. They're, they're very, they seem to produce pretty close to what they're supposed to. Uh, the soft or, or foldable type panels, you know, portables, I find that they're always, you know, about 50% of what they're rated for, roughly, you know, give or take a little bit. And this case, like you say, right here, look at this, 800 watts and we're producing 400. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of sad that the industry is what it is, but at the same time, I uh, understand the, the engineering, the features, the problems with portables. They just, they are rated because that's their peak rating of what they will do under the most optimal, perfect conditions. Obviously, they're not going to do it, you know. And that's not, oops, uh, portables out there, any of them, no. That's uh, Vivor, uh, EBL, and I think uh, All Powers or something, panels that are laying out there on the driveway right now. And if you, as you see, if you watch this over time, uh, as we get close to the next two hours, we will come up to, like I said, about 600 watts. But that's about all we're going to be able to do. And the other thing that's happening is while I'm waiting for this test to finish out, uh, <laughs> we're starting to fill back up again, of course. you know, <laughs> We're heading back up that 100% full again, which is fine. This is uh, just, we've been over these features before, but you know, you've got an Anderson uh, line that's out only do not put your solar in there you know do not ever do that but uh, this is for Anderson power going out to things that use Anderson power uh, plug and also you have your USB and your USB uh, the 2.0 you know so you've got everybody here you know for charging computers uh, cell phones whatever so you can plug into here to you know get that done if you need it and there's a separate switch so you can turn that on and off so you don't have to be using this feature or something the AC is on a button here one of the things about all of these machines and of course we also have the barrel plugs uh, for DC and the, uh, the the famous cigarette lighter plug you know yeah uh, one of the things that I, I do notice about these in, in general is all the buttons work 
uh, slow. You have to sort of hold them to make sure the machine says, okay, this is what you want to do. Okay, fine, then we will go to that mode. Now, Oops has put a little bit more software and features in here or something because this one here has something new I have never seen before. And that's when you shut it down, it actually says off up here as it shuts down. I have never seen that on any of these machines. Generally, you sit there and you hold the button for what seems like an eternity on a lot of these machines. And you know, you wait and you wait and you wait until all of a sudden, boom, you know, she powers down. And you go, okay, she's off now or something. This one here actually shows you when it's off or when it's going into off mode. Yeah, <laughs> that's a new one. Where are we at now? Uh, we're still hanging around that 400 watt. Yeah, that's. We, I don't know how much time we're going to have today for this. I think what I'll do is um, we'll cut away. I'll let it, everything out there sit for a couple hours maybe and jump back in or something so we can you know, finish up talking about... Oops! Yeah. Now I just shut the uh, solar off, turn it back on. Uh, we have some changes made here. Uh, this one now has, has, like I said, they've changed the features from the old machine I had. This one has a high speed charge and a slow speed. The slow speed is up to 800 watts, the high speed is up to 1600 watts. And using this uh, button, up, well, yeah, there it is up the top here, uh, you can select whether you want high speed or slow speed charging. But also, and this is something that I can't underline enough about it, and uh, the other units, a lot of times the companies don't even say anything, they just say, oh, uh, you know, your responsibility, not ours. Uh, you should have your AC and everything off while you're charging. Okay, yeah, that's, you know, and notice how fast this thing is uh, coming up to uh, not 100% fully charged again. So if you're going to plug something in and you're going to be running it, then shut it off, shut your AC off, plug your solar in, charge your station up, and then go back to work or put, put it back online once you've fully charged up the unit. It's something that a lot of people miss, and I've, I've seen a lot of owners where they have, not this particular company, a matter of fact, but I've seen other machines that have broken down because people were running the AC and the solar at the same time, and it actually will cause, it can cause damage, and you're sort of like, you know, you're running your own risk at that point. Warranty. This one's warranty for, they say, three years. Uh, the cables have, a, I think, a two-year warranty on them for some reason. I don't know why. I can't imagine turning a cable in, you just go to Amazon and order another one if you really needed to or something. And there's a two year warranty, I believe, on the uh, solar panels. Uh, they recommend a set of six 240 watt panels that are available through, oops, oh, again, uh, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find the website so you can go have a look at their stuff because they have a lot of other stuff. They also have this and they show it in a picture that's like, wow, they have this plus two, yeah, backup banks, you know, on top, uh, well, underneath it, stacked up and you think about that, that's like, that's like 6,000 plus watt hours of power to run things with, like, wow, that's a lot. Uh, one of the problems with the solar, and I'm really seeing it here today, uh, the sun's not up at the perfect angle kind of thing and again this is all goes back to why I always say like you know use more than you need or more than you think you need uh, even at 800 watts I'm not going to get 800 watts out of that mess out there I already know it but uh, I'm really getting uh, only about half of what I expected to see this morning so I'm a little disappointed but that's you know like I say the sun's not up it's it's about 11 o'clock now so it's still you know it's still coming up and we won't have good peak until probably about 12.30, 1.30, something like that this afternoon is when we'll have that, like, the sun will be like right over top of this kind of thing. And that setup has a problem out there. When I do something like this, uh, I've got them at 30 degree angle, the 400 watt, and the other two 400 watts is laying flat. So they're not working together real well because they're not all in the same angle to the sun, etc. You know, you know what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, this is one of the things I, I thought I better mention because uh, a lot of people uh, mess these machines up by trying to run all kinds of charge in at the same time discharge to an AC power or something like that. And you can damage and it's just, it's not, when you have that kind of investment and uh, your comfort of life sort of depends on it, you don't want to screw that up. <laughs> okay, uh, one other thing, I'm trying to get clarity here, uh, you'll notice we're at 100%, we're fully charged, so I missed the, I missed the moment and the, the sun is perfect now. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, on solar, it in the manual it shows up to 2100 watts. It used to be 2000. Like I said, they, the features have been changed around a little bit. The 1600 watt uh, is fast charge is on the AC power, which again, you get a, a plug for that so you can plug into an outlet someplace and fast charge or slow charge it at 800. Now, if for some reason something kicks out, the reset on this one, and a lot of them do this, you will hold this button over here and hold the power button down at the same time and hold them both, and that will reset the menu in case there's an error of, of some sort if the machine thinks there's a problem and it shuts off on you. That's how to reset. I mentioned it, but I want clarity here. Solar panel-wise voltage from 12 to 150 volts, and that voltage rating, uh, you should check your solar panels before using, of course, and check the open voltage rating because that's what you're looking at against something like this. So if you had, say, uh, let's just say 100 uh, volts, uh, what they call open voltage panel rating, because there's going to be two ratings on a solar panel, and you had a pair of those in series to produce 200 volts or something, you know, you're, you're over, you know. And at a 100, you're fine. But uh, say you had a pair of 75s, and that would be 150 volts. That's right on the edge of, you know, eh, 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 you know. But it would probably be okay if it's open voltage. You know, it would probably be fine. Uh, what I had today uh, was uh, 40 volts coming in. But I also have some old 12-volt panels kicking around. And again, I could use the 12-volt panels to charge this. I like to use higher voltage because higher voltage is less current, less heat, less possible, you know, damage to anything, including the unit or the cables that are carrying the uh, power. The OOPS also has a uh, Bluetooth in it, and you can connect it with your cell phone, getting the app, of course, and then installing it in your phone, and then the phone can connect to the system here, and you can get all your information and see what's going on and how everything is going health-wise and what have you in your system. So that's, that's another cool feature. Yeah, so if you decide to run solar in at the same time as running the AC out, uh, <clears throat> you're on your own, okay? <laughs> the manual does not actually cover it. It does not spell it out and say, you know, I would recommend shut it all down, just run the solar, then go back to this, but the manual doesn't say either way, so I don't know. Uh, the other clarity thing here is storage. That's a big problem because uh, if for some reason these are not in use, your best storage is between 20 and 30 Celsius. You know, obviously, you know, a fairly comfortable place to keep it in, you know, the home or something where humidity and uh, temperatures are controlled, etc. You do not want to be leaving this in a, a hot storage locker or someplace. You possibly could damage the unit, actually. Yeah. So for the investment, I would say, yeah, take care of this baby because it will take care of you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to end this. This is... The beast, you know, yeah. All right, now, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. We've got stuff we're giving away, uh, giving away a neat, really cool sort of a tool shelf unit thing going on here someplace. I don't know where it is right now. We've lost it already, but when it comes time to ship it out, we'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, to get in on that contest, uh, look back last week. Yeah, last uh, Thursday or was it last last week we had it on an episode and showed you know how to get in on that anyways i'm going to get out of here and thank you for watching and over and out <laughs>